here is the follicle stimulating hormone right there. And again, that spikes as well, not quite as high as follicle or as far as, as high as luteinizing hormone, but we still get a spike. Now, both luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone are released from the pituitary gland all the way up in the brain. So this is really cool to think about. They get secreted from the pituitary gland in the brain, enter the bloodstream, circulate throughout the body, and will bind to receptors in the actual ovary, which we can see again right here. So that's kind of a little bit of a journey for those hormones. And I like showing students this because we went from the brain all the way down to the pelvis with these hormones. And what's interesting about hormones is this idea about receptor physiology, or you could kind of think about this lock and key analogy. When you have hormones secreting throughout the whole body or in the bloodstream, that means it could potentially target or affect any cell if that cell has the receptor for that hormone. So why doesn't luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone affect other tissues, except for say specifically the ovaries? It's because the ovaries actually have the receptors that luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone can actually fit into and bind to and then create a physiological response.